Hello there, welcome to Yo Sacro. This video is from the space series and here I'm going to show you how to create this planet completely with a nuke. The main technique that I'm covering in this video involves creating multiple channels before rendering 3D scenes with a nuke and using them post render. So this video is broken up into two parts and right now let's get started with part one. Now let me first start by creating a simple 3D scene. Now connecting these together I have a simple 3D render setup but I have no objects in this scene so I'll go ahead and add in a few objects too. And I want to add in a texture on the spear so I'll take a checkerboard. Okay now this is a very default 3D setup and if I open up my viewer you can see that the checkerboard is seen but I can't really see the spear the reason being the camera is actually inside the spear right now so I'll go ahead and just move it back out a bit so now I should be able to see the spear I also need a light in the scene to get some shading or my scene will look completely flat shaded like now so I'll go add in a light and because the light is facing the same direction as a camera it looks fully flat shaded again so I'll go ahead and rotate the light a little bit okay so I added in a little bit more direction to the light so now if I come back out you'll see that it looks a bit more dimensional okay so now with this simple 3d setup one thing I want you to notice is that when I come to the scanline window node it gives me the indicators of the different channels which are present within it so now you can see that it has RGBA the depth channel and the motion vector channels so if I come to the viewer and open up my channel sets you can see these are the default channels which are present right now so I can go ahead and look at any one of these so what I want to do instead is instead of having nuke render out these default channels I wanted to render out separate channels which I want uh, basically I want to add in additional channels so let me go ahead and add one I'll go ahead and take the add channel node and connect that in before the checkerboard is connected to the spear with this I'm going to go ahead and create a new channel for myself so let me go ahead I'll create a new channel set I'll call it EOS and uh, let me call the channel inside EOS as E so I'll just name it E O and S so I've just given a channel name E and I'll save it out so I have a channel set EOS and it has a sub channel E and I'll just give it some value now if I come back to the scanline render node you can see that the green indicator is present meaning there are additional channels in this also the same is present on the add channel node if I come back and open up my viewer you can see there is absolutely no change in the default RGBA pass but if I open up the channel set now you can see that EOS is present inside now opening that up you can see that the E channel which I just added has come in and basically it's giving me a full mat it's giving me a mat for the object so if I want to render out different objects and I want to get a RGB mat for them this is one of the easiest ways to actually get that done now I've added in a single channel this way so let me go ahead and do a bit more complicated setup and add in some additional values so here by default I have this checkerboard which is going in and as you can see the checkerboard has no additional channels so what I'm going to do is create a new constant and this constant I'm going to tell has to be uh, let's say on the EOS channel and because the EOS right now only has the E channel inside I'm going to go ahead and change that so let me go ahead and edit it I'll call it EOS E O and S save that out as you can see I have three different channels now if I look at this EOS channel and give it some value there isn't going to be no change because I am working exclusively in this channel set so in here you can see if I change any values they do take effect so I'll give it a particular color which has all the three red green and blue values so now I have done this now I want all these EOS channels transferred onto this checkerboard map so this checkerboard map only works in RGBA and the EOS channel works only in the EOS channel set so to copy them in I need to use a shuffle copy and by default shuffle copy connecting the two input to the checkerboard will let me have the RGBA going into the RGB of the second input so let me connect the first input into the constant 
so what I want for, to go into the US channel is basically the US channel back in to the US channel so I'll just plug them in straight in I don't really want any alpha channel coming in so I can actually go ahead and tell I only want RGB on the second channel so now if I go ahead and open up the shuffle copy you can see that it also has a US channel with the proper color and it has a RGB so basically both this checkerboard and this constant have been merged together into a single image so now this image is being applied to the spear now another very interesting in nuke is that if you go to the scene or if you go to the object and when you're looking at this object the channel sets are still functional so if I go about and tell that I want to not look at the RGBA channel but I want to look at let's say the EOS channel you can see that the colors are actually visible now so we can go about into your constant and if I change the color values here you can see that this value actually takes care of in the viewer too so you can actually take care look at your um, different additional channels in the viewer in the 3d view too so now coming back to the 2d view and if I connect to the scan line render now you can see that this is the default checkerboard which I had previously but now also had the US channel which is giving me a flat shade of the color which I had given previously now one thing to note the direct light which we have is by default going to give you colors in only R, G and B channels it does not even have alpha channel so this light or lights are always going to be affecting RGB channels and none of the additional channels you add so therefore any additional channels you create will always come out flat shaded without any lighting so I'm going to make use of this to actually create some interesting effects later on in this video so now I have this um, kind of detail but as you can see it looks totally flat so what I'm going to do is add in some variation in this channel so let me go ahead open up this EOS channel I'm going to go ahead and add in let's say a noise in here so I'll add in the noise and I want the noise to be in the EOS channel itself so as you can see the channel is updated I want the color to be whatever channel or let's say black so once I've done this you should be able to see that my scanline renderer also updates and the EOS channel now has different variations and also to note the seam which is present on the sphere is the default UV seam so if you go ahead and rotate the sphere here so let's say about 10 degrees you can see the seam actually moves about so if you want to avoid this you can go ahead and try to edit the texture or basically hide the seam altogether so this is the default uh, thing which I'm going to be doing the entire video but I'll be showing different techniques on how to use it so let's go ahead and plan out exactly what I want to do and then we'll get started so the way I'm actually planning out the scene is that my planet should be somewhere in this uh, bottom 3 fourth region and the planet should be lit uh, with a key light coming from over here so basically this entire region is completely bright and it has that uh, planetary atmosphere halo going on on one side over here and then uh, on the dark side of the planet I wanted to have a slight rim light coming in so therefore it also has a slight halo on this side now after this I obviously want a star field in the background and uh, well, for the animation part of things I want this uh, planet to be rotating in this direction and the camera to be dollying inwards so basically the planets are going to come towards the camera right so this is the entire idea so I went about looking for some inspiration for what kind of planet to design on DeviantArt and so I found a couple of them so this planet is by uh, uh, Rich3521 on DeviantArt and as you can see that's uh, quite detailed it's done in view it's a uh, fractal base so it is quite detailed so I want to create as much detail like this as possible within nuke itself and also uh, this is a kind of rim I'm looking for as you can see the planet color itself is uh, red like Mars but whereas it actually has an atmosphere which is quite blue and it also seems to have an ocean at the end so I want to have uh, something like the edge like this 
next I really like this planet uh, mainly because um, you have all these wavy details in the oceans and you have like this entire layer covering the planet on top and obviously you have this halo on the edge now uh, the other main reason I obviously like it is because it's blue now apart from that I really like this planet because it has a lot of these details like ice cracks and um, veins so uh, this uh, kind of uh, embossed look which it has it's quite interesting and also the halo on it on the night side is pretty nice so I really like this because the planet itself is blue and the atmosphere it has is white in color now uh, what I actually had in mind in the beginning is actually something like this where the planet is there in the background and there are loads of asteroids in the front but I assume that the video is going to get too complicated so I've done the entire asteroid video separately so I'm doing this planet video so once both of these are done I'll create a different one which is going to explain both of these together and create a scene which is similar to this okay so pretty much that is it now uh, let me go ahead and briefly break down the different steps which I want to take while creating this entire um, scene setup now instead of going too detailed and technical into the workflow I have planned let me just briefly explain what I'm going to do instead so in uh, Nuke we are going to have this uh, simple node for the spear which has a texture applied so what I'm going to do is um, change the texture which is in RGB you know, from RGB to, to diffuse so I'm going to shuffle all the RGB channels to a new channel set called the diffuse channel set and I'm going to give all the RGB channels a value of pure one so basically it's going to be white so uh, this is going to give me two channel sets one is white color RGB and another diffuse channel which has actual planet texture inside it so once these two are done next step is the actual planet which I had as you know it had lights on it so the main light which was there I'm going to change the color to red the rim light I'm going to give it a blue color and I'm going to add a new light from the same point as a camera and I'm going to give it the green color so now because the RGB values are perfectly white or white color is the main texture the spear is going to give me a perfect red green and blue mat for the lighting pass and then I'm going to do the entire compositing in post render so let's go ahead and nuke and see exactly what this means now back inside nuke I have gone ahead and redone the simple 3d composite I have an object with a texture I have a light a camera and I'm rendering out the scene so now uh, when I look at this by default the RGB channel is there and there are absolutely no other additional channels which are added now what I'll do is go ahead and add in the shuffle copy and change this EOS uh, this checkerboard which is coming in and shift it to the diffuse channel and create a new set of RGB channels with white so let me go ahead add the shuffle node and over here I want the RGB values which are coming in to go into the diffuse channel so for that I'll go ahead and create a new set of channels so I'll call it diffuse I'll just call it diff and I'll just set that up I'll hit OK so now RGBA values are going into the diffuse channel but what I actually want is if I come to this viewer you can see the RGBA values still exist and also the same have been copied over to the diffuse channel but what I want is the RGBA to be completely white uh, and uh, all the uh, texture transfer over to the diffuse so for that in the shuffle copy node I'll just go ahead and come set back the RGB values in here until they're going to be perfectly white in color so once I've done that in the viewer diffuse should give me the texture and RGBA should give me the white value so this pretty much does the whole thing now if I come back to the scanline renderer you can see the object is pure white uh, with the lighting applied and if I go to the diffuse you can see the flat texture so this is one of the easiest ways of uh, shuffling it out and getting in different channels uh, rendered out easily now uh, the other thing which I'm going to do is basically change the light colors so let me just arrange the scene a little bit so it's easier so I have the direct light right now which is coming in so let me duplicate that to two different lights so this is going to be my main light this is going to be my rim light and this is going to be my fill light so selecting this I'll go change the color of this to be red so I'm just going ahead and telling red is one green zero and blue zero similarly I'm going to go take the second light I'm going to tell red is zero and okay this is going to be my fill light so let me tell 
blue is zero so this is supposed to be green in color because red and green are adding on top of each other I'm getting yellow colors now to change this value let me go ahead and shift over to the 3d view okay uh, the room was supposed to be blue in color anyway so let me just go ahead and change this okay now at last I have the fill light to do so this fill light is supposed to be green in color so I'll just go ahead and tell red is 0 and blue is 0 but green is 1 and also I want to default it out so right now you can see that light is following the exact red uh, lights direction so what I'll do is uh, go ahead and remove all the rotations on the green light so now is going to be the fill light to look at the result I have now if I shift over to red channel you can see it's the fill, proper main light I have the fill light and I have the rim light so that's basically it now this is in the RGB channels as you can see and now if I shift over to the diffuse you can see I have this default checkerboard pattern still visible right so this is exactly my entire composite pretty much entirely everything is literally done right here now all I have to do is transfer the lighting information from this RGBA pass which I have here to my actual diffuse layer which is in this diffuse channel set so to do that I'm going to make use of shuffle copies so I'll connect that in I'll also go ahead and rename the light so it's easier to know so this is red in color so it's easier for me to go about and know exactly which light I have to edit for any particular purpose so I just given those three different lights those three colors and this shuffle is going to be the red color one so I'm going to give it the red value now when I come to the shuffle what I want is basically to look at only the red color value from RGBA channel so I'll just shift it over to red and set it up so that's basically done and alpha is going to be taken over by the alpha so if I come back here and check my alpha channel it should be there the reason I want to check and make sure alpha is there because I have to unpre multiply this when I use it especially when I'm going to use one of the anti-aliasing samples as you can see the edges get polluted with darker values so therefore I need to be able to go ahead and unpre multiply them before using so I'll just remove that there for now so to be able to use unpre mult I'll go ahead and okay so basically this shuffle node right now is giving me the red color I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the green and the blue okay so to get the values on this shuffle node I'm going to set it all to green and in this shuffle node I'm going to set it all to blue the reason I'm actually setting all the RGBA values to RGB uh, all the B values to RGB here is because I'm going to be using merge and multiply operations I want it done on all channels if it was a mat which I wanted then I can set it to only one particular channel and set it to alpha rather than changing it to all of them so now if I come to this shuffle node you can see it's the main one and this shuffle node gives me the fill light and this shuffle node gives me the rim light so that basically does the entire thing beautifully for me okay so as you can see the same color coding is followed over here to make it easier for myself okay so these shuffle nodes are basically the ones which are giving me the different diffuse values now what I want to do is merge these together so that I can have a final diffuse uh, map so for that let me go ahead and take the merge node this is going to be background and this is my foreground so now if I come over to this you can see it's on the over operation which is not exactly what I want so I'll go ahead and set it to screen you can even use plus up to you and here using the mix value I can set how much of the fill light I actually need so using this value I can easily change that so let me go ahead and set this to about 0.1 so it's not entirely black it just has some values in there next after this I'm going to use another merge node and connect the A pipe in there now coming over to this merge I'm going to set this also over to screen and I can go change the mix to change the amount of value I want in the rim light so basically using this uh, simple light passes I was able to go ahead and get this values in here now just edit that a little bit make it a bit smaller 
okay so now I have all these values done uh, now what I want to do is basically add these all on top of my original lighting which I have so let me go ahead and uh, take another merge node here so this is basically the uh, going to be the background here now if I look at this there are absolutely no changes now what I basically want to do right now is if I come to this value you can see that this is giving me the RGBA stuff but what I actually want is a diffuse in coming in from the background so in the merge node the B channel I'm going to set that to diffuse done next the A channel which is coming in is actually set properly to RGBA so I want the A channel properly set to RGBA here too so that is properly done so now I can go ahead and set this over to multiply and coming to this you can see the checkerboard is actually using the proper diffuse values now what I'm what I'm doing here is quite basic uh, it's just simple compositing 2d compositing it's not actually related to 3d if you are getting confused please go through my videos on 2d compositing uh, on 3d uh, pass compositing and it should clear out a lot of the doubts now I have done this and as you can see I have really getting the 3d look of the whole setup now if I want to do any edits like if I want to change the amount of intensity on one of the lights I can easily do that and I can actually see the result almost in real time because most of these effects are actually added in post and they're just manipulations right okay now uh, next step I want to show you exactly how I'm going to add the glow on top of the planet as you know these shuffle nodes are the ones which are giving me all the values in there so let me go ahead and just arrange them so that it's easier to get access to them okay so these three shuffle nodes are easier to access now and I can just take in the pipes down from there so now what I want to do is basically use a big glow from the main light so let me go ahead and um, take a blur node I'll connect that to the main light and coming here if I go ahead and try to use the blur value you can see it just goes ahead and blurs the entire image and it doesn't really maintain an edge so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it has to use one of the RGB or one of the values as a mat and invert the mat so now as you can see it gives you this uh, very sharp uh, well, let's say a mat on the blur itself so basically it's going to blur but it's not going to blur entirely it's going to blur taking a care of this so now once I have this what I can do is apply a grade node to tell exactly how much of it I want so going to the grain I basically want to edit the white point or I can go ahead and edit the gamma to tell how much glow I actually need now once if I'm satisfied with whatever value I have I can go ahead and screen that on top of my BG so adding that in I'll go ahead screen it and looking at this you can see I have a glow on top of the planet if I want to change the value coming to grade I can edit the white point and adjust exactly how much of this I need so that is one and next I want the similar halo on the back end over here so to get that I'll do the same thing once more and this time is going into the shuffle for the actual uh, rim light so if I look at this okay sorry that's a fill light there you go add that to the rim light okay as you can see that's the rim light I've added the grade to that I'll take in a merge node connect that in there and now you can see exactly what kind of results I'm getting uh, it's uh, just using the alpha to cut out both of them but I don't really want to edit it as such so let me go put it on screen and as you can see it giving me a halo even on that edge now as you can see it's very easy to get this halo but now I want to actually get the texture for the planet itself so now I'm going to spend some time back here in the original texture to try and make the planet look better okay so that pretty much ends part one of this video I'll be continuing along in the part two of the series I really hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next part